Hi everyone, again Frank DeMore here bringing you the news connecting Bible prophecy with current events and today is June 14th and if you see by the headline it says the Brits instead of peace why? and uh, of course there's going to be some other news that I'm going to have at my website if you're here at my YouTube channel and I encourage you to go to my site which you can get to BibleProphecyMan.com and when you're there you'll be able to download my book absolutely for free today by clicking this link so let's get right into some of the prophecies first but I'm mainly today I want to concentrate on the peace talks and what's going on in Israel as far as construction and I'll tie the knots for you so that hopefully you'll get a good understanding what is happening in the Middle East because this is where most of the prophecies, the main prophecies, are going to be focused for the last days. Obviously, the whole world is going to be affected by what's going to happen because the whole world will be passing through the judgment of the Lord during the seven-year tribulation. But the focus will be on Israel. It was the focus on Israel during the first 69 weeks of Daniel's prophecy of 490 years. 69 of those weeks have already passed or 483 years dealing with the nation of Israel have already passed. There's only seven years left and we know that that's the tribulation period. And so some of the signs that we are privy to by Jesus Christ when he was giving it to John the Apostle, one of those prophecies that he told us to look for we see in Revelation chapter 16 verse 8 and uh, Revelation chapter 7 verse 16 and it has to do with intense heat, drought, lack of water so let me read it. It says the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire and never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. So right away we know that during this period of time in the tribulation period people are going to be faced with intense heat from the sun. They are going to be uh, facing drought because of the intense heat. They're going to face starvation. They're going to obviously, as the Lord says, that they are going to be thirsty because obviously if you have intense heat, if you have drought because of the heat and the water uh, dwindles up, then you're going to have people that will be searching for clear water, clean water, and any water that they can get during this time. But we do know that the sun is going to be playing a major role during this, uh, the, the last days. And, of course, you'll see it right here, the scorching heat. So, now, knowing this, of course, the Lord, you always have to put in perspective what the Lord said. It, the last day's signs would happen as a woman with birth pains. You can see this in Mark 13, 8. And we see over and over in the news, if you've been watching the news, just yes, this year alone, the temperatures are going up, they're increasing. They've been breaking hundreds and hundreds of heat records in 2012. Now, let's take a look at, obviously, I can't give you all of the news in 15 or 20 minutes but I want to give you some of the headlines that shows you some of these prophecies are definitely being fulfilled and this is only the tip of the iceberg here's the headline South Sudan refugee water shortage killing up to 10 people daily as many as 10 refugees are dying daily as the water runs out in camps in South Sudan hosting an influx of people fleeing from the uh, fighting in Sudan's Blue Nile state. And so what's happening in Sudan, not only is Sudan under this massive drought that has been taking place, but also they, they're they seeing, uh, and many of them probably don't even know this because they may not be reading the Bible, but the Lord told us in Matthew 24, you see it in verse 6 and 7, that the Lord warned about kingdom against kingdom and nation against nation, the fighting, civil unrest, and we're seeing this in uh, Sudan, in South Sudan in here. So you have more than one prophecy being fulfilled at the same time here. Now, I'm going to scroll down so you can see this is a picture when I was in Israel in 2010. 
Uh, this is right there in Jerusalem, the construction that was going on. And many people uh, don't even write about this, but this is, this is one of the prophecies that should uh, be spoken about because it, it is, there's uh, connecting uh, consequences to what's going on because of the construction. But first of all, we do know that the Lord told us in the last days that the cities were going to be rebuilt again. And this is one of the reasons why I traveled over to Israel and I wanted to get for myself the new constructions that was going on to be able to talk to people about it. And so this is one of the pictures that you'll find in my book. Now, the Lord, I'm going to give you one of the prophecies you'll see right here. I'll put it highlight it for you in Isaiah chapter 44 you see it says that I am the Lord who carries out the words of his servants and fulfills the predictions of his messengers who says of Jerusalem it shall be inhabited of the towns of J Judah and they shall be built and of their ruins I will restore them and of course I give you some other prophecies but just for now I wanted to give you the bottom line to what was taking place here. So the Lord prophesied that obviously when Israel would become a nation again, one of the things that would happen from the desolate land when they took it over was the Jews would rebuild the, the cities. And they have actually done that. Now, also in the last days that Jesus told the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to read this scripture for you, it says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and look at here, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, why am I connecting this... Uh, peace and safety issue along with the rebuilding of the cities is because I think that if you have been watching the news you'll see that the peace agreement or the peace process from the Middle East between the Palestinians and the Arabs has fallen apart and it's been that way now for close to two years and there is no sitting down at this point there hasn't been at this point where the, both parties of Israel and the Palestinians or the Arabs are getting together, sitting down, trying to figure out some peace agreement so that both peoples can live in peace. And so we do know that other prophecies converge, and they all are fulfilled. And what we do know is the call for peace and safety, it is stopped right now. So that is an indication of what Paul was writing to us, that when they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Now, we know that the people are calling for peace and safety, but because there's a breakdown and there is no call, now would be a, a, the time that would we, we would actually see the destruction that Paul talks about in the latter part of this verse, in verse 4. So I'm going to show you some videos and then I'll tie the knots and you'll understand exactly where I'm going and then you'll understand why I'm showing you these things. But the first video that I'm going to show you is a video that talks about the settlements, that talks about the construction, what's going on, and I'll probably stop it and highlight some of the things that they're saying. It's not very long, it's very short actually. But it's very, very interesting, and it does definitely connect the prophecies, and it shows us in our time, we are the people who are seeing prophecy fulfilled. Once we know that the occupation is illegal, and we know that it's subject to international condemnation, and it's very costly in terms of lives and money, then we have to ask why Israel continues to maintain the occupation. And the reason is because it intends to annex the territories eventually. Now, I wanted you to hear that again because that is important. I'm going to play this back for you. The reason is because it intends to annex the territories eventually. Now, I want you to take a look at the date. This is 2008 when they were saying this, that they were going to eventually annex the territory. Now, 
I believe that that's exactly what they're doing. It's their land. They can do whatever they want on that land. And since the Lord said that they would build up these cities in the last days, you would have to expect that's exactly what the Jews would be doing. Now, they, all, they may not even know it because most of them don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. They may not know what they're doing, but they are actually filling prophecy. And this prophecy also, as you can see here, comes from the Old Testament. Zechariah, you see Isaiah. So what they're doing is fulfilling prophecy that most of them, because most of Israel are secular uh, they're not religious people, most of them, and so they are unaware, uh, more than likely, what is happening. So let's go on. For decades, Israel has been colonizing Palestinian land by building settlements on that land. The settlements are in contravention of the Fourth Geneva Convention that forbids the transfer of population into land colonized by illegal force. The settlements are dotted throughout the Palestinian territories and are set up strategically, often on hilltops, to give Israel military control of the land and its natural resources. Now, first of all, let's let's go back here now because they, she keeps saying it's Palestinian land. Well, in 19, for example, 1948, there was a war to destroy Israel. And actually, that war took place a day after Israel became a nation again. On May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation. And the next day, on the 15th, the Arabs attacked Israel to try to destroy them. They also tried to do the same thing in 1967 and 1973 as well. And obviously, the Arabs lost all of those wars. Now, in 1967, Israel took East Jerusalem and they took the occupied uh, what they call the occupied territory that belonged to Jordan and the Palestinians at that time. But they, they took it as a result of the war that came against them. Israel didn't attack anybody. They were attacked. And part of the spoils for the victor was Israel took back the land. And these people are calling it the, the territories of Palestinian now. So I wanted to make that clear because this land actually is owned and rightfully so by the nation of Israel. Namely water. The settlements together with the surrounding land that they have expropriated control over 40% of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. The Israeli settlements are Jewish only settlements and they are linked together by a network of bypass roads that carve up the West Bank restricting Palestinians freedom of movement and that simultaneously link the settlements to Israel proper. The strategic placement of the Israeli settlements and the bypass roads can be described as an Israeli matrix of control over the occupied territories. The purpose of the settlements, the purpose of the bypass roads is in the end to create a web of control that will make Israel a permanent possessor of the territory and the rights and interests and concerns of the indigenous people of the land, the Palestinians, the big majority, uh, are not of interest here. Given that Israel's goal is eventual annexation of the occupied territories, the settlements of course are a means to attaining that goal, but they would appear to be threatening colonies if they were presented in their true light. So better to hide their identity to sanitize the language that describes them. Now, obviously, if you're not a, uh, if you are a Palestinian or an Arab, you would agree that there is being occupied. The land is being occupied. But as I said, nobody asks the Palestinians and nobody asks the Arabs to attack Israel. And Israel has the right to defend themselves, and as a, as a right. They did defend themselves, they incorporated their land, and the fact, here is the bottom line though, the bottom line is, uh, whatever's going on is God had saw this, he warned us about it, and he told us that the people, the is Israel, would be building the cities, and they are actually doing this. Now, whether you're an Arab and you don't like what's happening, God is the one who said that this was going to happen. And this is why the Jews are building their territory. Now, they may not understand or they may not believe why they're doing it, but they are, in fact, building 
the uh, building the cities exactly like God said. And as a result, you have conflict of which Jesus talks about when they're calling for peace and safety. Now, if you've been following the peace agreements, if you've been following the peace talks, one of the main issues on the peace talks or surrounding the, the peace talks is East Jerusalem and the West Bank er the territories that the, the Arabs want back and the construction of these uh, new cities on what they call disputed land. And this, what I believe, is a perfect scenario to cause a major conflict between the Arabs and Israel when they stop, when they, they find out that the peace talks will not go anywhere and eventually there, there probably will be war over the land. Now to show you, and I'm going to go into 2010 now because this video was taken in 2008 and I'm going to bring you up to date to show you what's going on and we're getting closer to the war. Now I believe that this also brings us to the other prophecy in Ezekiel or the uh, prophecy in Psalm 83 where the Arabs are going to attack Israel and I believe that part of the reason why they're going to do this is because they're going to try to get back west the West Bank and East Jerusalem. So let's see what the news says in 2010. Now, right there, I wanted to stop because you notice, again, they're talking about the, pal the, uh, the peace talks took a hit. And this comes to the heart of the matter, and it also leads to what Jesus told us about when they're calling for peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. Palestinian officials caution that Israel is soiling direct peace talks. Chief negotiator Saeb Erekat said, quote, This is a severe blow to the efforts by the United States and the Arab League to prevent the peace process from collapsing. Once again, Mr. Netanyahu has chosen settlements over peace. The 238 new homes are reportedly part of a 3,500 new home nationwide tender offer. For more news updates... So there you have it. We have, again, the issue of the construction on disputed land and it, it involves a breakdown of the peace process. Now in 2010, the peace process went away and they've been trying many of the countries have been trying to get Israel and the uh, the other parties to sit down to have uh, to, to continue the peace talks but it hasn't uh, come to fruition and all that's happened since 2008 and 2010 is that the tensions in the Middle East over the disputed areas is getting worse and worse now what I've done for you is I put down some of the news reports uh, giving you some mo more information about the uh, construction in East Jerusalem. For example, the September uh, 27th report uh, from the, Arab El the news that came out on the 27th and it talked about the 1,100 new housing units that were, as you can see, in illegal occupied East Jerusalem. Well, if you're, if you're a Jew and you live in Israel and you saw the war that took place in 1967, there wasn't anything illegal about getting back East Jerusalem because they were attacked, and as I said, they were not the ones who attacked the Arabs. So that land came into possession of the, uh, the Israelis legally, and there's nothing illegal about it. And then again, you'll see that the Israeli government gave the go-ahead for more homes and the disputed land in 2012. And uh, again, they're talking about 500, I believe it was 580 different uh, homes that are going to be uh, developed and built up. And again, fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Now this is, you'll see this uh, news here. I believe it's in Spanish, it's the Spanish news, but it was a, a video that I wanted to put up because it talks about, now we're into 2012, 
uh, currently. It talks about the same issue that was brought up in 2008, 2010, and again now in 2012, the construction and the breakdown of the peace talks. El primer ministro israelí Benjamin Netanyahu aprobó la construcción de 850 viviendas en los asentamientos judíos. It says uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu approved the construction of 850 houses in Jerusalem settlements of the occupied Palestinian territories of the West Bank. Occupied since 1970. It says the decision came after the majority of the Hebrew parliament rejected to legalize five buildings inside the occupied Palestinian territory. So all, although the buildings were to be relocated, they would still be built in the occupied territories. It says dozens of Israeli settlers uh, gathered at the Congress to reject the measure. They reject the government decision arguing they can live there uh, where they brought their, their houses. So you can see that there's uh, even within Israel, there's there's conflict within our own people, but Israel is uh, from 2008, they're building 2010, and in 2012 the construction goes on, prophecy is being fulfilled. And this becomes a major issue when it talks about the conflicts in the Middle East, because I'm sure that if you keep watching the news, and you're going to see that the tension will continue because of the birth pangs are getting worse and eventually what's going to happen and I believe that it could happen very soon that there will be another attack like there was in 1967 and 1973 by the Arabs and this time they're going to try to wipe out Israel and Psalm 83 will be fulfilled and we'll see the fulfillment no doubt of what Jesus told Paul about the destruction that would be coming when they're calling for peace and safety. So when people look at the construction and uh, they think not too much about it, it really is a major issue in Bible prophecy and I wanted to make sure that is at least those people who are watching my YouTube channel and go over to my website will understand how important it is that if you are a Christian, you should be watching what's happening with the breakdown of the peace talks and the construction that's being uh, uh, put in place in the disputed areas, as what they call the disputed areas of the Palestinian territory. And these are major, major issues. Now, along with another prophecy here, the Lord told us that we would have pestilence and plagues, and you'll see the scriptures here, and uh, there was a plague of locusts that hit a California town. Now I'm going to, if you're at my YouTube channel, I'm going to have all of this information that you'll be able to see that talks about not only the plague that hit uh, the locust plague that went into this town in uh, California, but also the disease. The Lord tells us that we're going to have pestilences, different diseases. And uh, I'm going to give you some information at my website that you'll be able to click to. The links are right there that you'll be able to see. Click those links. And here is another case. Last week I talked about the flesh-eating uh, disease that have already st stricken. I believe it was five people. Now there, there was another person. You'll see her picture here. Uh, a pastor just died from this flesh-eating disease and it's uh, this is really serious I gave the information last week if you'd like to look it up but that wasn't the only one there was some other information about uh, the disease in the headline you'll see the man likely sickened by the plague as in critical condition in Bend 
and uh, this is you know pretty pretty serious as well and uh, but what I wanted to also bring to your attention is we see in Revelation chapter 13 we see Jesus talk about this Antichrist who obviously is going to be able to control a one world government he's going to have a system he's going to have a military he's going to have people behind him and he's going to have a system of commerce in other words he's going to be able to stop people from buying or selling as the Lord tells us in Revelation chapter 13 where it says that nobody is going to be able to buy or sell anything unless they take this mark of the Antichrist and we know that in the scripture the scripture tells us that where will it be placed Jesus shows us that it will be put in the hand or in the forehead and so these things could have never taken place many many years ago because they didn't have the technology to do that and they wouldn't be able to monitor and keep track of everybody but now with the new technology in our generation which is the only generation who's ever been able to make this come to fruition we see that there are governments one after another are coming up with uh, new technologies and they are forcing these new technologies on their people taking away freedoms little bit by little bit and what you're seeing here is the road to setting up this one world government where eventually the Antichrist will monitor everything you do and track everything you do including keeping you from buying or selling anything unless you took his number or the name of him whatever that name will be we do know that it will be the identification mark of the Antichrist now I'm showing you a couple different articles that came up that showing you some of the ways that the freedoms are being taken away from the people and of course I'm gonna center on this article from the UK and you'll see that Theresa May sets out plans to monitor the internet use in the UK in the details of the internet use in the UK will have to be stored for a year to allow police and intelligence services to have access to it under the government plans records will include people's activities on social networks sites web mail internet phone calls and ongoing gaming Home Security Theresa May said that the change was needed to keep up with the criminals who are using new technology. But the senior David uh, Davis said it was incredibly intrusive and, and would only catch the innocent and incompetent. So here you have a government, like I was saying, the example of a government being able to watch everything that you're doing monitoring everything that you do in other words you might be typing something to your your family member and maybe you don't like what the what the government of the UK is doing and they'll be able to monitor this and they keep it and to absolutely use it against you if they wanted to use it against you but here's the bottom line the technology is here and the governments are well on their way of taking freedoms away now here is another one and this is from when you take go to my website and click this link you go to Senator Ron Paul and Senator Ron Paul is fighting for the freedoms of people in America and here you'll see the Senator uh, Paul proposes a bill protecting Americans from the drone surveillance and these are these planes that fly over and they can monitor everything that you're doing just about now Tuesday introduced a preserving freedom from unwarranted surveillance act uh, which would require the government to get a warrant before using aerial drones to surveil US citizens and more broadly Paul's bill is aimed at preventing unwarranted ungovernmental intrusion through the use of drones according to the lawmaker now the bill s3287 will require the government to obtain a warrant to use drone drones with the exception of patrolling national borders when drones are needed to prevent immigrant danger 
uh, imminent danger to life or when there are risks of a terrorist attack, the bill would also give Americans the ability to sue the government for violating the act. So at least we have somebody in the American government who is trying to stop surveillance like this and it's just in, encroaching on freedoms and this is happening not just in America, it's not just happening in the UK. There's other nations that are doing similar things. We just saw, for example, if you've been following my site, you saw that India, for example, just launched one of the biggest uh, biotech uh, IDs uh, enforcement we've ever seen. Um, over a billion people, the government is forcing these people to get a biometric uh, a national uh, identification. Little by little, uh, you're definitely seeing that this road is being paved for the Antichrist to take over when he does hit the scene. Now you could say that all of these things are nothing but a coincidence, but let me tell you something. Jesus has given you all of this proof, not because it's he's uh, you know it's some kind of coincidence. He gave it to us for wisdom. He gave it to us for knowledge. And he told us all these things so that we would know that he is definitely God. Only God could be telling us these things so far in advance. And we see all of these things coming to pass in our generation. And this is the generation who has been chosen to see Jesus Christ come back. And I hope my videos and my book will show you that that time is almost here to see the Lord Jesus Christ come back for his church and the beginning of the seven year tribulation would begin. And I hope that uh, you would give your life over to the Lord now. Don't wait because we don't know, for example, we don't know, we know the construction's going on in Israel, we know that they're not gonna stop. Uh, they are going to be hit soon by the Arabs and uh, when that happens, all hell will break loose in the Middle East and if you haven't recognized who the Messiah is, hopefully by then you will. And uh, please take advantage of my book again. All this information will be in my book and uh, it will help you to see if you're now being encouraged and you want to know more, uh, read this book. You can get it today for free. I never charge anybody for anything. So God bless.